All right. Thank you for joining us. This video is brought to you by the streamingadvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. And what we're going to do in this video is show you the setup for Fire TV. You start by pressing the play button and you're going to choose your language. Amazon provides a number of different languages, but you know, as you can see, I am speaking United States English, so I'm going to choose that as the language option. It scans for your networks, and then what you're going to do is you're going to find yours. You might see your neighbor's networks, you, know, you might see some of yours. If you've got multiple ones, you'll find them all, as long as you've got a strong enough signal. But you come in here, and this is where you're going to type your password. If you need to change from capital to lowercase, that's down there in the left corner. We're going to skip showing my password, though. Just put yours in. So you see it is connecting to the network. And now we're set. After you're actually connected, your Fire TV is going to look for updates. That's going to try to figure out whether there is a new version of the software. And it automatically will download them for you. You can keep track of what's going on by looking at the little bar up top. And just so you know, when it's done with the update, it is going to reset. And we're going to basically skip so that you don't have to watch the whole bar go up. You see that the Fire TV is powering off, and so that's what it's going to be doing at your place. And you don't have to do anything. Just put the controller down and let it do its job. It will come back on. And you see now it's installing the latest software. Again, just leave it alone. Let the bar go up. And when it's done, it will reset again. So here it comes. We're going to move it forward forward so that you see where we're going. Da -da -da -dum. Okay, so now the Fire TV is reloading for the second time, but now is where you start getting into the actual, you know, the nuts and bolts about setting it up. It, Fire TV gives you a pretty easy to follow screen prompts here. So it's finishing the update. If you happen to have a device that's completely up to date, you know, you just, I guess you just skip these steps. But most of the time, something coming out of the box needs the latest thing. Here is where it starts getting a little more complicated. If you already have an Amazon account, you know, if you have a Prime, if you get groceries shipped, choose I already have an account. If you've never used Amazon before, never registered a credit card with them, choose I'm new to Amazon. But here, if you already have an account, you basically, you know, I'm putting you at gmail.com. That's not probably anybody's actual address, but I think you get the point. You submit your address. You put in whatever your password is. Don't put that thing in there. That is not going to do anything to help you. It's just a nonsense word. Click sign in. And you see that it's registered. So this is registered under my wife's name, so that's why it says Josette. So it recognizes who we are. And we're going to continue. If it isn't you, if you're like, hey, what's that? Change your account. So let's move on. And we will go from there. Just so you know, if you want to see these terms of use. You notice that it's got information down at the bottom that shows, you know, agreeing to terms of use. All of that is actually available on the Fire TV if you want to read a bunch of legalese on your screen. I figure most people are just going to skip along and move on to continuing. But just so you know, it is there. I think it's worth it to go ahead and save your passwords because it saves you time later on.
I skip parental controls because it just gets to be so tedious. If you're in a situation where you really need them, I mean, they work, but you're going to have to type in the code almost every time you try to change something in your settings, and it gets pretty old. What this is, is the screen to set up your remote control. And this is important because the new Fire TV sticks all come with the ability to control volume and power. So what we're doing here is we're going to the brand of TV that we have, and you see there's tons of them listed. Looks like I passed me. What we have is a Hisense TV. Fun fact, my Hisense TV is actually a Roku-powered TV. So just in case you were wondering, you can hook up a Fire TV stick to a Roku-powered TV. You just have to set it up correctly. As you see, it prompts you to listen to music. And once you're listening to the music, a choose up and down on your volume control on the remote to see it even gives you a little diagram if you can hear it say yes and now it's all set up now you can turn your tv on and off and control the volume with the fire tv remote so you don't have to worry about anything else when you're using the fire tv in this menu it kind of gives you some little cues as far as tv services it doesn't have every single TV service you ever used or want to use listed. But you can skip this if you want. We're going to go ahead and go through the menu so we can take a look at it. Got a couple of things here. So I'll just say Disney Plus and Hulu because I do have those two services. One there, one there. And then we move on. This is something for if you have TV everywhere apps and I do have some services that allow me to connect with TV Everywhere apps so I'll add a couple of them and I don't have access to any of this stuff so I'm going to skip it and I have Sling TV so I'm going to click on Sling TV but you'll notice it doesn't have Hulu with live TV and you know all of the other sorts of services so we will just move on with this. Okay, so now that it sees we have all of these things, we will finish. And truth is, you don't need to do this. You can download any of these things from the App Store. It just sort of starts it off for you so that you don't think about it as you're moving along. Now that we're here, we're going to take a look at the basic menu. Your home screen is dominated with things from Prime, which is Amazon. You know it's Prime Kids, Prime Movies, this, that, and the other, along with your apps, which is things that you already have. The live TV section brings you to apps that allow you to access live things. You see there's sports ones, HBO, and Showtime. All of these are sign-in, premium sorts of things, along with things you can get through a television subscription. Your videos, that's what you already own. The free section is something new to Amazon that shows you things that you can stream for free. Again, there's a whole lot of Amazon content here. Things from Prime, things from IMDb TV, which is also Amazon, along with some other things. Movies is the same sort of thing. This is where you're going to get on-demand movies. You see right there, Scoob is on there. That's you know available for download at the time of this video. And here is your apps section. It breaks down into games and categories, which is where you're going to get in a particular. Otherwise, you can just look through its basic suggested apps. For the rest of your setup, though, you want to get into the settings. And you want to make sure that everything's straight. If you have to change your network, you can do that from this screen. And this is helpful if you know, if you go somewhere, you go to the beach, go to a, you know, if you move, 
get a new modem, you're going to have to go in here to set this up. And so it's pretty straightforward. You just click on the network, see all the networks, choose what you need, and sign in. On displays, you might not have to do anything with this, but this is where you can set up your screensavers. Some people like to put their own photos in so that they can look at little, you know, a little photo show, slideshow of their fun experiences. Display is important. If your TV doesn't show the whole screen on your apps, this is where you're going to fix that. You click on col uh, sorry, Collaborate Display, and you'll see you've got this diagram here. And you control it by pressing up and down on your remote. You see how it's getting bigger or smaller? And that's pretty helpful if, like I said, if for some reason if your TV brand didn't click so much with the Fire TV, you can make sure that the size of everything is correct. Otherwise, you don't really want to mess around with a lot of this stuff. The, the surround sound click is important because you know you might have special speakers that you want to integrate. Otherwise, you can kind of leave these settings alone. I just wanted to show you that they're there. But, you know, kind of keep it simple, you know. The display mirroring is really only available for Windows, PCs, and Android devices. If you want to try experimenting with that, it's it can be wonky. Applications section here is where you're going to be able to add and remove things, or actually just remove things, stop apps. If you're familiar with Android, this is a whole lot like the app section of an Android phone. So you can find everything that's listed, and you know if it's acting up, you can force stop it. And I'm just going to uninstall TLC Go for the moment. So you get your choice, it'll be uninstalled, it's uninstalling it, and now we have the rest of the stuff that we had. That's a good way to clear up space, you know, if you find that you don't have enough room to install other apps. It's not, you know, you really can't add space to the Fire TV, you can't add a, like a hard drive to create, you know, to create more space. Equipment control is nothing you really want to mess with. The live TV section is cool. This is something that Amazon has been working on over time. I wish it presented you with a list of services. It starts by defaulting to Fire TV, but there are services that can integrate into live TV. We'll show you how that works. The news is something that you set up by choosing different sources, and it'll create like a nice little personal newscast based on your interests. But we're going to leave that alone for the moment. And we're going to show you how sort of you can get into the live TV a little differently. So, again, we'll click on live TV. And we're going to go out. And we're going to add Pluto TV. Pluto TV is something that works. It, you know, And all you got to do is ask for it. Using the voice remote, you just ask for Pluto TV. It'll find it. You download it. And in a couple of seconds, it will be ready to go. See? Got an app. Boom. And now when we go back into the live TV section, it's going to have a new option for us. And you see there's a little live setting at the top of the screen where you can access these things. See, Pluto TV. And it's going to add things from Pluto TV. So now when we go back to the live TV section, it has 51 channels. So that's cool. If you have to add a video game controller, you're going to do that under controllers and Bluetooth devices. This is where you would add anything else, if it was a keyboard or what. The Alexa section is just some information on Alexa, and it also tells you some things that you can do with Alexa. 
And it has it built in just like an echo or something like that. And so you can talk to it and get all kinds of information. And this is just a list of things that you can give a look at. The preferences again. These are, you know, if you, know, if you decide you wanted to add parental controls, you can do so from this page. You can also take a look at some other things. You definitely want to keep your time zone correct. You know, have, make sure it's whatever it is for you because that's going to help Alexa with you. You know, if you say what time is it, what's the traffic like, you know, things like that. If you're looking to add third-party apps, this is where you're going to set up for that. You have to allow apps from unknown sources. We'll just turn that on so we have the options later on. Otherwise, if you need to completely clean out your system, you can do so by resetting it all. And this is the accessibility section, which is important because you may have a user that needs help, whether it's reading the screen out loud or increasing the size of things. And Amazon has a help section, which is really nice. These are little short videos that show how to do things. It's you know, kind of like me, but it's you know from Amazon. The funny thing is that it has things like fixing your remote with the app. But of course, if your internet's messing up and that's what's causing your remote not to work or something like that, you're going to have trouble using the app. But it's out there. There's a lot of information. It's, it's, it's actually worth it to take a look at that stuff after you get it so that you familiarize yourself with it. But that's the basic settings, and that's the basic setup for an Amazon Fire TV. I hope you found that helpful, and you will share this video with your friends. As always, I'm Ryan Downey, the streaming advisor. Stream on, my friends.